welcome to the healing arts of being you. Today we have a very special guest with us, and that is Stephanie Bellinger of the Spiritual Boss Babe podcast. Stephanie is a spiritual mentor and business coach dedicated to guiding her clients to the pinnacle of their purpose, teaching them to show up every day as the person they came here to be. Through this work, Stephanie has built an empire on freedom and abundance and continues to impact people and build a massive cosmic collective of elevated souls around the world. Stick around for an incredible conversation on manifesting new opportunities, understanding how your energy flows through the work you do, and overcoming any resistance in the ego that may be holding you back. We are so glad you're here. Without further ado, here are your hosts, Chelsea and Allison. Welcome, friends. We have the lovely Stephanie Ballinger on today, the spiritual boss babe, and we are so blessed and so grateful to have her. Hopefully, we're going to just dive in and get a lot of good, deep details about some spiritual world, the woo-woo, and kind of all of that magic that she brings to us. So welcome, Stephanie. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here and to share lots of magic and codes with your audience and trust that it will yeah. be a beautiful, activating conversation. Absolutely. Incredible. Incredible. So we have, we've met just, you know, a couple times and been so just enthralled in your energy and the work that you do. Would you give us a little bit of a background, a kind of who you are and what you bring to the table with the Spiritual Boss Babe brand. Sure. So I work and work with and empower entrepreneurial women with getting their message out into the world in a much bigger way and creating a life and a business that really is in alignment with the truth of who they are so that they could experience the ultimate level of fulfillment, freedom, abundance. And I absolutely love this work. It's been about seven years now since I started my brand and my community and it's just been ever evolving and growing and uh, just really rewarding. We have a very big community on Facebook, my podcast and tons of women around the world are get, getting out there in a bigger way and doing their thing and it's so beautiful. It's so inspiring, yeah. truly. So you work with people um, virtually, do you also do in-person sessions like what's kind of your the method to your madness yeah so mostly virtually through my programs and masterminds and i have done uh, some private in-person stuff for my quantum breakthrough weekend it's like a private retreat uh i do intend cool. to do more live in-person stuff this year as i kind of was just mentioning like the live thing has yeah. been coming at me so I'm excited to bring that element and do more in-person work that is really transformational yes. and fun. And, you know, there's definitely a different energy to that for sure. Mm -hmm. But for, oh, absolutely. For the part, I'm, been okay. Awesome. I'm super excited to see you. You're up level and just really like if, if the live thing was holding you back in any way, it was just how much you're going to shine now. Like truly like that is just brilliant and so exciting to me. Thank you. Same to me. It's so already welcome. massively up leveling. Yes. I like to bring people with me along. Incredible. Ride, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're Being happy to join over here. <laughs> Being somebody who's more, I consider myself an extroverted introvert where I, um, I can go out and do things and I prefer to not be out and doing things, but I also love it when I am out doing things. Mm -hmm. Um, you mentioned a little bit how it was kind of like, you had kind of gone into a little bit of a hermit mode. Um, do you have, knowing that you kind of have a tendency towards that hermit mode, do you have like a plan in place as you're being called more towards these in-person events in order to kind of balance what your natural tendency is? Because any tips that you have on that, I yeah. would definitely appreciate. Um, that's a great question. For, oh, yeah. I don't necessarily have a plan in place for that. Oh, well, I, I mean, I have a rough plan. I, I want like to leave room for flow as well. And if you want to bring human design into the realm again, you guys know how. Yeah, I love by all means. So I'm a generator. So I naturally am attracting things to me all the time. And I'm just responding with my gut. So, for example, you know, I, I was in this hermit mode for a while. Also a 6'2", which is the role model hermit. And so 
I do need my hermit time. That's when I get a lot of creativity done. And at the same time, it's like, okay, let's come out of, out of the, the shell. And so I set this intention recently of wanting to connect with new people, um, wanting to step into my next edge and my next level. And that for me looked like more life things. And so just from setting that intention and doing my own work uh, to be in my joy as a generator and just as anyone, like we should make that a priority just by setting that intention, different things started coming to me. Like people, random people that I don't normally speak to a couple of like inviting me to different things. And I just was like, yes, all right. Yes. You know, listening to my gut and saying yes. And, that's kind of how I operate. Did you say you were a projector? We are projectors, uh, both of us. Yeah, she's a 5'1". Five 5'1 one. Five one projector, cool. Yeah, so... She's projector. a 5'1", I'm a 4'6". Okay, my roomie's a 4'6", my bestie. Um, yeah, so projectors may be a little bit different, but it's not, you know, that different. Projectors need to wait for the invitation, but you can always create an environment for the invitations to flow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I just like, I love doing the in-person stuff. One of my favorite things to do is like community education, again, from the mm-hmm. PT side of things. Um, and I was just noticing this recurring theme of incoming patients who are just like super fearful of diastasis right now, which is like that separation of the belly muscle when you're pregnant. Women who are like terrified to sit up straight in bed because they're going to make it worse. And I was like, what is going on here? So I sent a message out to some of my gym owner friends. And I was like, hey, if you're hearing clients saying these things, like I'm happy to come in and chat about this because it's like, there's so much fear mongering out there. It's ridiculous. And I would love to help people feel more comfortable. And I have people who are like, yeah, we would love that. We would love that. And then I end up having like two in-person events this week. And by literally Tuesday night, I was like, oh my God, is it Friday yet? Like I was just exhausted. Yeah. (laughs) And I was like, yeah. Yeah. And it's important to pay attention to that too and honor that. And especially as projectors, you don't have as much energy also as other people like generators. And so it's important to honor that and have your solitude when you need it. Yeah. I feel like Mm -hmm. I, um, and now that I'm learning a little bit more about human design, things are starting to make a little bit more sense to me as to like mm-hmm. things that I've battled over years, things that I've been like, you know, oh my gosh, Allison, just suck it up and do it. Like get over it. It's not that big of a deal, you know, mm-hmm. um, that now I'm like, okay, I see why there's so much resistance to this. I see why this is such a hard thing to do because it's not mm-hmm. really, really my path to be pumping through things. Yeah. And so like in the future, I will likely not schedule two in-person events in the same week, or I will likely yeah, not, <laughs> it is, or I will like try to plan ahead on other business items so that like, I don't have to like be in the zone and doing after the events and things like that. Mm. But it's just one of those where it's like, I don't know. I kind of, I sent Chelsea messages a couple weeks ago. I was like, okay, I'm finally looking into this projector thing. I get it now. I see what I'm supposed to be doing. It's, um, it's crazy. What, um, what brought you into the human design world? Like how, what brought you here and what have you learned so far? I am obsessed with human design these days. I, I first was introduced to it several years ago and I didn't go super deep in the, in the beginning. I just started learning about, you know, how my energy works, but it was the the last, I would say almost two years now that a year and a half, two years that I started going way deeper because I didn't realize that the more you understand your, your own energetic blueprint and how you are literally designed to be, it's like the code of who you are. And it's, it's not to be like restrictive of like, Oh, this is it. And that like, cause I know some people may think of it that way. It's actually, very freeing when you understand how your energy flows because then you get to understand okay this is when I'm in my not self or I have these centers defined or undefined and so being aware of what that means I know that this can come up because of that and this is what you know it just gives you more information so that you understand um, more functional ways to go about your day, to go about your business, to uh, interact with different people or, or in relationships, to kind of understand that. Um, so for me, the more I've gotten into my own design, obviously the more I want to learn, what have been learning about it and diving in. And there's so much like you can go at it for years and years and years. And so there's more, um, but because the bulk of the work that I do with my clients is supporting them and being who they came here to be. That's always the core of it. And then we just channel it to their business and their message, how to create everything on the foundation of the truth of who they are. And so 
when we bring human design into that and, and add that dimension to the work, it just further supports me in supporting other people and also them in understanding how their energy flows. So they're not um, thinking they should do things that are actually out of alignment with them and understanding how to actually listen to their intuition and their decision-making strategy, their strategy and authority. And uh, it, it just makes things a lot easier. It supports in being more in flow instead of creating resistance, mm -hmm. right? And oftentimes that's actually the hard part because um, uh, you're so used to doing things a certain way, right? So for example, for mm -hmm. generators, we're so used to doing, 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 like doing all the things. Uh, we have a lot of energy and we're not supposed to be doing things unless it's lighting up our sacral. So if we do things that we don't like to do, even though we have the energy, we, we might right. we'll feel like frustrated. And, you know, yeah. for projectors, um, if you, for projectors, if you, you're waiting for the invitation all the time. So if you, if, and the invitation can come in a, a bunch of different ways. Like if someone reaches out for it to, to work with you, for example, and it doesn't mean you need to accept every invitation. So this is where it's like, if you accept invitations that are out of alignment because your authority said, oh, no, this doesn't feel like a perfect fit, but you still accepted it, it may not work out in the way that you wanted to, or you may feel bitter or resentful because it was a pain in the ass client who like you had to hold their hand the whole way and like whatever, they weren't doing right. the work. This is just an example. And so yeah. uh, when you can learn how to really honor your intuition, even when it doesn't make logical sense, it's not supposed to make logical sense. And that's, that's really what uh, a big part of living by your design really is. It looks like, you know, I love that oh, because yeah. like one of the things that I've noticed is like what you said, it's kind of like you have freedom now. Like you have this, like, it's like this path, this, this guidebook as to like, is this a thing that is I don't want to say wasting your time, but is it like something that's distracting? That's what I mean to say. Is it like, this is, is this a distraction or is this what you're actually intended to do? And that mm -hmm. whole, like waiting for the invitation, but also you don't have to accept in every invitation. You're not, that's you're one not that, supposed like, to accept every yeah. invitation. And now that I've gotten more comfortable with this and I can say like, you know, when I get on the phone with somebody to try to determine like whether or not I'm a good fit for them, I am also like, are you a good fit for me? Like, I, I don't want to try to convince you that you're not your diagnosis. You know, if you're coming in and you're, you mm -hmm. are your diagnosis and you're refusing to accept that you can grow past that, we're probably not going to fit very well because I'm going to say a lot of things that are going to challenge your belief system and you're probably not ready for change yet, you mm -hmm. know? And so it's like mm -hmm. understanding that, a little bit more has given me the confidence to say, mm -hmm. this is not my person, but that's okay. Cause I have a lot of people that you're going to jive well yeah. with and let me set you up with them. And that that's way awesome. they're still getting the help they need. I still feel okay about the situation mm -hmm. kind of saying we're not a good fit mm -hmm. and they're going to get the care that is actually going to benefit them versus thinking there's this PT who is trying to bulldoze their belief system, which is absolutely not what I'm trying to do, but it's so mm -hmm. conflicting to what they personally believe that it just feels like too big of a shock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense, and it's important. Yeah, I can even. Oh <laughs> no, I was just gonna say. Go. Can you share with us? Because like I know that human de design is something that you love, but it's not your whole thing. It's Do you not mind my whole thing. sharing your like journey to get to where you are? Yeah, what part of my journey? Because I have lots of stories. <laughs> you have a lot of stories, and I loved I I, lifetimes in this one lifetime. Yes, I know. You sure have. <laughs> um, I think it was interesting the shift that you made from more like the fitness world to into where you are now. Sure. Like I think that's really cool. Um, mm -hmm. And then we'll see where that takes us. Yeah. So um, I have always had an entrepreneurial spirit. I've always been an artist. I consider myself an artist first and foremost. Even my content and the work that I'm doing now, I view as my art. And uh, so I wanted to start there for a second because. Before I did fitness, I did a lot of creative things, makeup artists, bra designing, like, you know, I make pendants as well. You guys might know, um, oh. power pendants, if anyone wants to check them out. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where do we check them out? At power pendants on Instagram. Um, yeah. So, uh, I, I have always been into art, but, uh, there was a time in maybe like 2012, I went through another phase of awakening 
And I eventually realized that I wanted to support people um, in a in a way where they could transform their life in some way. And so for me, personal development was, or sorry, fitness was my first taste of personal development. And it's always been part of my life since I was about 17. I lost 60 pounds when I was 17. And, but it was always my thing. So I decided, let me become a trainer because actually the reason why I wanted to become a trainer really was because I wanted to make um, fitness videos for YouTube. And in my mind back then I was like, Oh, there's no way I can make fitness videos for YouTube if I'm not a trainer yet. So I have to get, you know, credentials. So I was working, I was waitressing at a, a bartending, a, a, a bartending, bartending waitressing thing in New York. And all these trainers came in and they were like, Oh, you want to, you know, and I was like, oh, I want to be a trainer. I was talking about this. And they're like, Oh, you should work at one of the, one of the best gyms in New York. So I was there for about a year and then went on my own. And I, like I said, I've always been an entrepreneurial spirit. So I knew I wanted to do this for my own, but I needed to get my in. And while I was at the gym, I was also learning about um, network marketing. And I was introduced to the ability to impact people from all around the world. I was already in my realm because I wanted to make those YouTube videos. And I had this, like, I want to reach a lot of people and make a big impact. I just didn't know what it all looked like. So that's Mm -hmm. kind of cool to share and say, because it was my intuition guiding me and I didn't know what it was all going to look like or what it meant, but I had a deep calling. And at that time, all that information that was there for me was, I want to reach a lot of people. I want to make a big impact and I want to be, you know, abundantly supported by it, doing what I love. That time it was fitness. So I went, um, I became self-employed as a personal trainer in New York city, started my own boot camp, and was doing the network marketing. And at that point, I was like, holy shit, I might, this is, this is like my dream come true. You know, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. And like, I wasn't like balling or anything, but I was doing really well for myself. I was renting, you know, a posh studio, living in the city, training my clients, you know, making six figures. And it was a huge, um, timeline shift as well back then. Cause I remember from, I went from barely scraping by and not even having a solid place to live. I was like couch surfing for three months to suddenly making like 10, 15 grand a month working for myself. Like, and I'm, and it literally happened. It, it, it felt like it happened overnight. There was some little planning, you know, undercurrents, but it happened pretty quickly. And so when I started doing that, I was doing great. And then I realized, oh man, you know, am I going to be able to keep this up? I had this uh, desire to make videos still, but I wasn't as confident as I am now. And it really crushed me because I knew I had it in me, but I also wasn't, I didn't know how to bring it out. I, you know, I was like, when I made videos back then, I would be like, hi guys, my name is Stephanie. You know, like, and it's fine. Like everybody has their day one. Uh, I wanted to get better at it though. And I just, yeah. So I realized I had all these limiting beliefs come up and I, and I started learning about healing and personal development, getting, going to seminars, reading all the books, listening to hundreds of hours of videos and, and realized, wow, I didn't even start my healing path really from the abusive relationship I was in or this and that. Mm -hmm. And so there was all this dialogue going on in my head of, you're not going to be able to keep it up. Like you suck. You're stupid. Like, you know, like whatever, all of these, sorry, all of these, um, disempowering stories were going through my mind. And I was feeling like just not confident and capable. And that was when I, uh, discovered EMDR therapy. Uh, it stands for eye movement desensitization reprocessing. And it's a really quick way to heal from PTSD and trauma. Like within a few sessions, I started going to that. Then I was taught, uh, EFT tapping, hypnosis, NLP. And I was so committed to rewiring my subconscious mind because Mm -hmm. If I didn't, and this actually did happen, but you know, in hindsight, I, it was all fine, but things from my personal training business seemed to crumble. Like clients moved away, like money was running low. I ended up bartending again after a year and a half being self-employed and I felt like a complete failure. And so I knew that I knew what caused it because I was aware of all of the stories that were playing out. And I knew what got me there to begin with was I was visualizing, I was embodying, I was like really excited. And so I had the 
awareness of the contrast of what was happening. So I was, that's when I really committed to doing the inner work. And then I was introduced to plant medicine in 2015. And that's when I decided, okay, this is all happening for a reason. I don't want to do just fitness anymore. I want to help people in a deeper way. I want to help them. I want to support them and empower them with like connecting to their higher self and um, really being who they came here to be and being confident and all of that. And just being able to hear the voice of their soul versus the voice of other people who've said things to them or whatever is going on. And so once I started working with psychedelics, it actually, that played a huge part in the inspiration of my brand, to be quite honest with you. That's incredible. So, you know, I have to ask because, you know, I'm super interested in this world. (laughs) Um, Okay. For those people who are interested in learning a little bit more about psychedelics, how can you, what would you recommend that they look for in like a guide or somebody who they can learn from to, cause I know there's like tons of different types of options and tons of different types mm-hmm. of guides and there's, you know, micro dosing and there's the big doses and all that kind of stuff. Like, how do you recommend that somebody who's new to that journey, who's like, you know what, I want to do some subconscious kind of reprogramming as well. I want to open yeah. myself up cause I know that I'm holding on to other people's crap and I really want to be able to see my path clearly. And I feel like this is an option for me. Yeah. How would you recommend they go about that process? That's a great question. I think that, um, I have always been referred to people and I, you know, I think that if there's anyone, you know, and they can recommend someone and you can do your own research there, I think that it's good to know someone who's had a direct experience with a facilitator. Personally, that's how I feel. Mm-hmm. Um, aside from that, cause you can't, I guess, always do that ask the right questions. Like how long have they been studying and training and working with the medicine? How many, you know, groups have they done? Like, do they understand your unique, um, situation or intentions? Um, and listen to your intuition. But I think the, the questions, uh, to ask should be, you know, along the lines of how long they've been studying and doing the work and, what that looks like and entails. And also do they have an integration process? Because most people who facilitate psychedelic journeys, they don't have an integration process. It's like, okay, the next day we'll do an integration circle. Cool. What'd you learn? Great on your way. And then you go back to your environment, back to the same things that you've been around the same Mm -hmm. people and you're a different person, but you're in the old environment with the other people. And so you can revert back into the old patterns or it could be, pretty, uh, it could be a lot. And so it's important to have someone to support you and there's integration coaches. I do zoom some integration coaching too. Uh, cause I'm very well versed in, in the space and outside of the space. Um, but mm-hmm. there are people who can specifically support you through integration too, outside of, you know, the person that you may sit with, but it's important. And what integration is, is okay. I had this big life altering experience in my psychedelic journey. How am I going to actually bring this back to real life? Because, you know, it's, you got to come back to real, real life and the same environment or, you know, what's going to shift. Mm-hmm. Are you going to, are you going to quit your job and find a new one? Are you going to have that conversation right. with your mom? Are you going to mm-hmm. apologize to your partner, whatever? Like, are you going to, stop eating the crap that you've been eating, you know, cause you, you know, a lot of different things. And yeah. of course you don't need to do it all at once, but yeah. Right. I actually have a question. So for people who maybe aren't even as aware of like what psychedelic therapy would do for them, would you mm-hmm. say that it is a tool used to help you quiet those programmings and those stories that we were talking about, those you suck, you're mm-hmm. the worst, you're going to fail, et cetera, to yeah. kind of quiet that and thin the veil between that version of ourselves and our authentic selves and like who we are at our like soul energy, our authentic self, that capital S self. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone's experience is different and unique, but in my experience and many people I know, it has definitely supported with quieting down the voice of the ego, really opening your heart. And when you're in that space, 
you're able to, you're, you're correct to hear and feel and know the truth of who you are. You're able to see past situations in a completely different light. So when you have that new awareness and that new perspective, it allows you to let it go. It's like, Oh, okay. Like I've done so much healing. Uh, I was in a very abusive relationship when I was 14 to 20 and I have done so much, um, healing around that in the psychedelic space that supported me in completely seeing the, the experience in a different way, forgiveness, gratitude, um, forgiving myself, you know, tending to that version of myself who was in that situation because everything's happening at the same time, past, present and future. And so I was able to go back and like give her all the love she needed, Mm -hmm. you know? And so there's a lot that can come from working with psychedelics and every different one is obviously a different experience. I mostly love working with mushrooms and, uh, aside from the healing that you can do personal healing Mm -hmm. on your own inner child, past experiences, releasing emotions. You can also do healing, um, uh, for your lineage, your, you know, your ancestors, uh, cause it's all in our DNA and, you know, it's wild. Like there've been times where, so let me, so let me say that. So you could do healing for yourself, healing on your lineage. Um, and then you can also, connect to the source you can connect to your multidimensional gifts your star family like so many different things that uh can conspire and happen um one thing if you don't mind me sharing like a little experience please do yeah please do i've had a lot of experiences and honestly before i get into the story psychedelics and plant medicine have completely changed my life like i and i and i say this as my own experience. And I'm also aware that it's not for everybody and that's completely okay. And it's not like a quick Mm -hmm. fix. Oh, when I do this thing, then I'm going to be fixed. There's no fixing. Um, but growth, expansion, healing, if that's something that's calling to you at the right time with the right person, amazing. It could be great for me. That's what it was. And, um, and there are also a lot of other ways. Like that's why I said the integration is the most important part. It's like, what are you going to do after it? So I had this experience Um, speaking of healing within yourself and your DNA, uh, where I had this intention to go into this experience. And I was like, okay, I'm going to, my intention is to release all of this grief so I could find my spark again. That was my intention going in, which is crazy because what happened was once I was in the experience, I like hours into it, I started crying. And then I was just like a normal cry. And then the facilitator came over and, you know, was kind of cheering, not cheering me on, but he was like, good, you're doing great. Like, you know, I'm here Mm -hmm. if you need me kind of thing. He sat next to me. And just from that, like, I felt, I guess, safe enough to let it more out. And I was, I had the most guttural, primal, excruciatingly painful, yet simultaneously blissful release of grief. I didn't even know those sounds could come out of my body. I'm, I'm serious. You would think that, I know it sounds like dark, but you would think that everyone No, knew I love it. Just like, I had no yeah. idea. It was like tumbling out of me in the form of mm-hmm. cries. And, and it sounded very painful, but I was experiencing extreme bliss and this is when my light language fully activated because I was clearing all of that energetically and vibrationally out of my cells from the crying Mm -hmm. and the vocalization of the Mm -hmm. experience, if that makes sense. This is what I'm Yeah, absolutely. And so as soon as it like lifted all the way out, in came you know, the frequencies, the, I, I mean, it was a wild experience. I have a whole episode, podcast episode on that. And that was when I understood, um, that, well, I already knew that we are so much more than our human selves. Like this is just our little avatar here in the physical world. That was a higher aspect of me or, you know, God, whatever multitude of things, right. Streaming through me and how I am interpreting that it very much felt like, other aspects of me outside of Stephanie, like my multidimensional. Yeah. And 
the through the vibrations, the frequencies, and these are not sounds you can make on your own. And um, mm-hmm. I literally saw my like my DNA, my cells being upgraded, being like like the old energy that I was releasing from the grief. Tr- like I felt mm-hmm. like it was like just like you know it released. And then all this uh-huh. new information came in and restored it. It was almost like I was being like sewn back up with new information or dormant right. information. And so, um, yeah, that was that was an incredible experience that uh, opened my channel and showed me a lot about the power of, you know, what's possible in the form of healing and also showed me. And it's funny because I said, my intention is to release this grief and find my spark again. Like, yeah, I mean, that's incredible. But it showed me that out, even outside of situation like that, when we allow ourselves to fully feel and fully emote without being in any stories and even using, you don't always have to use the vibration of your voice, but if you do, and when you do let Mm -hmm. yourself go at it because that, and when you're saying out of any stories and you're just with the emotions, you guys probably know this stuff. Like that's the fastest way and the, and you know, easiest way to move energy in my, in, in my, well, I mean, Absolutely. there's a lot of other ways, but, and it feels so good. Yeah. And so you good. open up. I love to that more, you said that. Yeah. So that was also the, like another golden nugget I got out of is, okay, this was a great mystical experience. And also in everyday life, now I know hey, like, let's give space to what's coming up when it does and don't not judge it and just let it let it come out. Yeah. So with an experience like that, when you because you like you said, you have you have um, a background in helping people integrate and things like that. Do you Mm -hmm. do like your own check ins with yourself? Or are you working with a facilitator to integrate a big processing like that? Yeah. So for that, um, I, I do both. Um, I have worked with a lot of different coaches and facilitators, but specifically for that, um, I have also a very close soul family that is, they're all into, you know, they're all coaches and facilitators and, you know, so I have like a family that I can plug into to discuss different things with, thankfully. So that, that and sharing it with them too. And that has been super supportive and also, I have been doing the inner work for so long now that, and I'm not perfect, obviously, by any means, but I have learned how to navigate my inner world a lot better. Like pretty, Mm -hmm. I'm pretty proud of my ability to navigate myself. Absolutely. And if, and when I'm stuck or, you know, whatever, I have support all around me in a multitude of ways and that is important because we do get in our own box. So it's a combination of both for sure. Okay. And I love also that the people I do have in my life, they're always stretching me and challenging me to grow as well. And so, and I do the same for them. Like, we, you know, call each other out on different things and just like lovingly, like, you know, and so it's helpful to be, be around people that expand you. What do you Whether recommend for the people? What? For the people who, for the people who go through an experience like this, and like you mentioned earlier, like sometimes like you have to come back to the crap, like you're coming right back into this yeah. environment that is keeping you in these patterns. Is there any, is there hope for people in those situations who are maybe living with people who like they're kind of stuck in this pattern with, or they're working with people who are they're stuck with the pattern with. And they're, there's like their, their living situation does not allow for them to just be like, I am done with you. I am moving on. I am bettering myself. Yeah. Are those people kind of just like stuck with it or are there like options for them to like for, first of all, still make their progress? Mm-hmm. We're never stuck in anything. We always have a choice. And so when people realize that they always have a choice. That's when they are empowered. If you believe that you do not have a choice, you are not in your power. And so there's that. And I also get at the same time that it's not always easy. So for example, if someone did realize, holy shit, I don't want to be with my husband anymore, or like, I want to quit my job. And you know, there may be this 
you may not, they may uh, choose to not do that immediately because there's some things they need to figure out and plan and whatever to feel grounded in that process as much as they can. So there's that. Um, so I would say that, yeah, there's, you always have a choice. I mean, I was, I was with someone a while ago that I, I really, you know, wanted things to work. I, I wanted, he, we just weren't on the same growth path and growth is like one of my top values, especially with someone I'm going to rock with. They have, we have to be either, mm-hmm. if you're either growing together or you're growing apart. And so, um, we were growing apart and I didn't want to listen to that right away. And I didn't for a little while. And I ended up, it was a long distance relationship at first. And then I ended up moving in with him. He wasn't a bad guy, whatever, just like was not <laughs> aligned. And yeah. quickly after I moved in with him, I found myself just realizing like almost instantly. And you know, this isn't thing. And with psychedelic help and whatever, like just was all the things were pointing to, you know, you gotta not live together at least. And Mm so I found myself crying myself to sleep every night, like really going through my process with it. And I had support. I had one of my best, uh, girlfriends, soul sisters, amazing facilitator as well. And she did coach me a lot through that process at that time. I didn't have the same tools and awareness that I do now. And Mm -hmm. I'm eternally grateful for her support during that time. But eventually I had to make a decision to leave, to move. And it wasn't easy. And what, here's the thing. I believe that when we decide in our mind that, right, we're ready for something new or we're ready for something to be done, the universe conspires to make it happen. And it doesn't always happen in the time. I mean, we do need to take action and be proactive about it. So I made that, uh, that decision and, you know, I ended up manifesting just the perfect new little place and everything worked out and it, it, it came to me again. It was like, yeah. So long mm-hmm. story short, just to, just to share an example and to say that if you do need to make a big decision or you, you are choosing to make a big decision that is not easy because it's not always easy, you've got to really listen and honor your intuition and what your heart is telling you and figure out how that's going to pan out in some way, shape or form, you know, because it's not always easy. And I totally get that. I've had a lot of experiences where it is not always easy. And you know what, you know, what's even harder than that staying in the same place, Mm -hmm. you know? And so choose your heart. Yeah. So something that's always helped me also was okay how will I feel when I'm not in this situation? You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. this isn't what I want. So do you think that there's something to be said for like, you know, you mentioned manifesting, like I I manifested this new environment. Let's say you're somebody who like, you are in a situation where you feel like financially I can't get on my own or I legally, I have to be around this person because they're a toxic ex spouse or whatever the case may be. Right. So you're kind of, you perceive hmm. that being stuck there. You perceive it. I was in that situation. I didn't have a car. I had like a couple hundred bucks in my freaking bank account. I lived in a new state that I just moved to and I was trying to get my business off the ground and I was sleeping on a fucking air mattress. Okay. Like I, Mm -hmm. I was in a place where I couldn't typically do it and I did it because I decided to. And so, Mm -hmm. like I said, once I decided to, I, you know, I had two side jobs going on. I, there was a, a friend that I knew that would come into the bar that I worked at who was moving out of his apartment and wanted to lease it to me. I couldn't do it on my own. So I found a freaking roommate, you know, I, I could get furniture. So I was like, yo, I'm going to freaking sleep on it. Like I didn't care at that time. I cared Mm -hmm. enough, but what I cared about most was my freaking sanity. (laughs) And I knew that I wasn't going to be able to focus on anything or get to where I wanted to be if I stayed in the same place. You know what I'm saying? Right. And if you're somebody (laughs) who's like 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 that and you've decided... (laughs) It's true though. It's so true. true. And if you've decided to make that decision and you feel like this is the decision, I am open to this, I'm taking whatever I can get and nothing really seems to present. Do you feel like there is... like? 
you're there for a reason still. Like there's still something for you to be learning from this environment that like you haven't quite learned the skill yet that you need in order to get to that next level. These are, this is such a great question. I love this question because yes, I've, I've literally, I'm sure we, most of us have been in situations like that. And sometimes you don't know what the hell to do. You're like, man, I'm trusting, I'm doing the things like, you know, what something's got to give. I get that. And whenever I've been in situations like that, there are two things that really help me three. So the first thing is to, um, ask myself, what do I need to learn from this? What is the lesson here? What do I need to learn from this? That, that needs to, that to be integrated so that I can clear this, the energy around the situation. Um, and so there's that. The second piece is, um, I like to remind myself that there's going to be, there's going to be a day soon that there's going to be a day where I look back and I'm going to have one hell of a story to tell about this experience. And that excites me for some reason. Cause I, cause I you know, I, I yeah. put myself after the successful shift, like well after, and I'm like, man, like a year from now, I'm going to be telling this, like just now how I'm telling you the story about the, the air matchers and the, I'm, uh, I had that thought back then. And one day I'm going to tell this story. It's going to be awesome. And so there's those two things for perspective shifts and broadening your, you know, awareness and getting mm-hmm. back into your power. And then there's actually taking even micro actions. It doesn't need to be big things, even if you don't know what these actions are going to lead to. So say, for example, like, I don't know, things are you're struggling financially and you want to change your living situation or whatever your 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 business is like still getting off the ground, um, whatever it is. And you don't know what to do, but you're like trying to, you know, maybe you, uh, you decide to, I don't know, go to an event that you saw pop up in your town and you're like, Oh, let me just go here. And then maybe you end up like mingling and meeting a few people and you sign on a high level client. That is exactly what you, you know, you know, you can help them. They're perfect for you and Mm -hmm. totally unexpected just because you decided, all right, you know, I'm just going to go to this thing or maybe you want to, it could be anything. It could be yes. things like that. Yes. It could be also, you know what, uh, I'm going to prioritize my joy and I haven't been doing that. And I like, and it's not easy to do when you're in a place where you feel like crappy, obviously that's the time that it matters the most. And so yes. like whether you got to put on a pump up song and do a dance in front of the mirror, like how I love to do or Anything that uh-huh. you can think of, even small, that is action or actions that get you into a you know a different energy or whatever, it could be anything. Mm-hmm. But so action, it's even if it has nothing to do with the thing, can open you up. Those are, that's from what I've experienced. Like even this in the past. I love week, that example. Yeah, like in, even like I said in the past week, I had literally. Do you mind if I share another like? So many Please things. go ahead. <laughs> So, um, and this is great for people listening. Like if you're going through what I felt like, and I feel like a lot of people have been going through this where uh, lately, or maybe they're coming out on the other side where just, you feel like you're in a funk, like things are like, meh, you feel like just, it's not, you know, in super flow, yeah. like yeah. Kind of boring, whatever, Absolutely. whether it's in your relationships, whether it's in your business, whatever. So, um, I was going through a phase where I just wasn't feeling like myself and, um, about like a month ago. And of course I had my good days, you know, we're human. It's not like I was like, you know, in a depression, but it was, you know, like not fun. Yeah. So it it wasn't feeling as easy. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I had a friend come over and he was like, how are you doing? And I could have said, I'm, everything's doing great, you know, like whatever. But for whatever reason in that moment, I was like, you know what? I'm honestly really not doing well. And I started crying. And for me, um, in the past, I had a hard time like being really open with people, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I felt safe. And I was just like, you know what? I'm not really doing well. And I started crying and he asked some really great questions and I realized in the dialogue, he's a projector too. You guys ask him very great questions <laughs> <laughs> to, get, to get to the heart of it. And I was hearing myself telling him, 
Um, I haven't been on top of my practices. I haven't been, uh, you know, doing the things that like make me excited. And I don't feel like myself mm-hmm. because I haven't been doing, I, I have, I do a mirror work every day. I haven't been dancing in front of the mirror. I haven't been flirting with myself. I haven't been joking with myself. I do all these things like legit. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but it's fun. You know? And no, I, I love it. Been, yeah. Like, you know, I walk, it just, I do really funny random ass stuff by myself but I wasn't doing that. And so I was crying. I was like, I don't feel like myself. And then I realized that I was judging myself for sharing this with him and all. And from that moment, just from that realization of, I haven't been doing things on a consistent basis that bring me joy. Number one, that's the awareness. I'm judging myself for feeling all of these things and for being seen in this space. So I'm obviously not accepting myself in some regard, Mm -hmm. because, you know, self-acceptance and self-love means you, you, you gotta be there for yourself, even in the moments where it's hard. And so Mm -hmm. I realized I wasn't being there for myself in the moment that I was. And so of course I was still stuck in the stagnant energy because I was judging the shit out of myself (laughs) and exactly neglecting the things I was. So I had all this awareness and I was like, all right, yo, let's get on. I'm going to get on top. And for what just even and releasing the energy from crying and being seen uh-huh. and having a witness multi-dimensional healing right there i like unlocked things that's when i started i'm gonna say yes to more things and started getting all these invites um to, to got that invite to speak at the thing i'm gonna say yes to this yeah. because another really golden nugget is when you say yes to things, not just things that you normally wouldn't do, but when you say yes to things that scare you, you literally become another person, a new version of you on the other side of that. And you, everyone can think about this right now. Think about a time before you, when you were scared to do something and who you Mm -hmm. were before you did that thing versus who you were after you did that thing. And when, you know, crushed it or whatever. You were, yep. you, you've met a new version of yourself. It could be anything or any, any skill that you became great at. I remember who I was before I did videos and stuff or when I really wanted right. to do videos. I was like, oh, I want to do them so good. I want to be, and you know, some things don't happen overnight too. Yeah. But you know, like, so you always become a new version of yourself on the other side of fear. Yeah. I love that. That's, that's such a great way to explain it too, that it's, it's on the other side of fear. Like that fear is showing up for a reason. Yeah. And in fact, if we listen to it, exactly. instead of running from it, we are going to get what we're looking for in the long run. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. I love that example. Yeah. yeah. And I love that you have truly like so many within your story. You're like, listen, I committed to my message, my vision, what I wanted, what I was, my authentic self. And it was hard but I did it and I kept committing to it. And there were moments that I had to like rewind, take, take a step, look within, identify that you weren't doing the things like dancing in the mirror and loving yourself the way that you needed to. And you were still able to then overcome that and look what has happened. It's even better and more incredible. Like that's such an excellent example. I love that. I'm so glad that our Mm -hmm. listeners are going to be able to really like have that tangible Mm-hmm. story and see because I mean this is someone what how many downloads have you had of your podcast now we're over half a million now yeah. over half a million yeah. right we're so like this this, there's, this is no podcast. small feat like you've built an yeah. empire yeah, within you. your and brand yeah, I so appreciate that and I'm just getting warm girl we up level it right exactly. now exactly <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, that's incredible. And how inspiring for people, especially because I have a lot of clients who are really interested in this stuff, but they're like, oh, but no, I I could never do it professionally. And it's like, but but if you're that interested and you're that passionate about it and you want it every day when you wake up and you go into your corporate job and you're like, this is just not it for me. Just because it's scary doesn't mean you shouldn't. It means you should. Mm-hmm. And look and how excellent that worked out for you. Yes. Uh, you know that quote, fortune favors the brave? Mm. I mean, yep. it does. You cannot. And, and, you know, I believe that I'm a believer that things can be easier and more in flow, but you have to be okay with 
facing the fear and it, that's not always easy. And, you know, you're completely right with what you said. A lot of, that's why only 1% of people actually make it, you know, with right. their business and things and, and to the level of mm-hmm. success and abundance or whatever and impact. Yeah. Because most people, they stop, they either stop right before the finish line or they don't even start to begin with. They just like tiptoe in yeah. because of the fear and really the quantum leaps happen when you go there first and who you be and what you do. You, you, we've got to embody that version of yourself right now and take the actions that are in, in alignment. And it's not always easy. Like just, mm-hmm. it's, it's not always easy, but it's always worth it because when you leap, the net always appears and you will realize how resourceful you actually are. That's one, one of the greatest gifts I realize is how resourceful I am. Mm-hmm. And it, it's not always mm-hmm. from effort. No, no. You know, well, we talk about it all and powerful. The time. Yeah. <laughs> and we talk about like Chelsea and I talk about all the time. Like if we're feeling stuck or something and, and like I do a lot of like checking, like you said, checking in with different versions of myself and things like that, you know, and that whole like I'm looking forward to being able to tell the story of the crap mm-hmm. I'm going through now in a few years, you know. And so like when I when I talk to people about this or I think about this and stuff, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to check in with my future self and what is that person doing in order to like, when they're living their life at what I'm dreaming, I want, what are they doing in their day? But it's like, okay, well, Allison, you just, you just don't have that experience yet. You, well, not that you don't have the experience. You don't have the skill yet. Like you still have to learn the skills to get there, which means that you have to take the leap of faith. You have to take the jump. You have to go into the fear so that you are forced to learn the skills so that you can then continue to build on those skills. It's like, if you want to be, you know, if I just wanted to be a PT the rest of my life, I would have just stayed in the hospital system, but that's not what I wanted. You know, it's like, I wanted to have a wider reach. So I needed to take that step to a place where it gave me the freedom to do the other things. And so I think that's one of the things that people miss is like, well, I'm, I'm thinking about it and putting my energy in it. And I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm doing all the things and stuff. It's like, right. But have you actually like done any acting? Like, have you acted on anything to like face the fear? Because that's a skill. Facing fear is a skill. You know, facing unknown Mm -hmm. is a skill. And if you haven't done any of those yet, if you haven't tested your capacity for zero, like you haven't built the skills required to be that 1% yet. And so that Mm -hmm. is, I think, something that's really important for people to to understand. And for myself included, I'm not excluding myself from this. Mm -hmm. It's just the capacity for zero expands as you get more into it. You feel more comfortable like, okay, well, that was a rough month, but it's okay. We can move past it. Um, But yeah, that's all I had to add there. I love yeah, that. I love no, that. I love that. And you, it's cool that you've been going through like such a big shift. I'm sure too, that probably was a big leap for you from going to, you know, on your own with what you're doing and taking this new direction because a lot of times we tie our identity too with certain things, what we do jobs. Whatever, oh yeah. You know, and that's another big thing that people need to break out of if they're, you know, going from a job or a career to being yeah. on their own, there's this thing where it's like they've always identified with being a, you know, executive at a company or clinician. whatever. Yep. Clinician. And so, like, for me, I, you know, I wasn't really, like, in a real job. I mean, it was a real job. Like, personal, like, I would teach fitness classes and bartend, so it wasn't like that. But I can, I did feel that a little bit. And it's Oh, like, yeah, absolutely. You're letting go, you're letting go of a part of who you were. Yeah. Your identity. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of that, talking about letting go of who you were, and you've mentioned that you've kind of migrated through a lot of different avenues in life. You, like you said, you've lived a thousand lives by this point in your life. Um, my line and we're talking about, <laughs> <laughs> and we've talked about how you're, you're know, going into this next big, next big jump right now. We're like at yeah. this launching point of this next big jump. Do you feel like at this point in your life, do you feel like I am doing what I meant to be doing the rest of my life. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Or is it more of like, this is the next stepping block of what I'm going to be doing next. And I don't know what that thing is yet, but I know that this is what I need to get there. Like, is there a direction you're going for? Or is it like, I'm just going where life takes me, but I know this is the next thing I need. It's a little bit of both. Like I know that I'm on my purpose and mission. I actually have this uh, whole download that came before a while ago where 
I don't believe that you define your purpose. It finds it finds you. It is you. And so whatever's lighting you up right now. And also some people just know, like I've been doing what I'm doing for the last six, seven years, what I'm doing now, but there's all elements of who I am and it, it evolves as I evolve. And there's also a core theme for me within the things that I've done and continue to do. And so now in this next evolution, I feel like it's an elevated version of my work, an elevated message, an elevated presence, you know, you get a little preview, Um, an elevated frequency. Um, And I am always open to things expanding and evolving. I'm, it's me, like we're building personal brands, most of us, at least, uh, you know, the three Mm -hmm. of us. Yeah. Um, And so whatever I do, it just evolves with me and comes with me. And it is, you know, an extension of me. And that's what I believe. Like, that's my whole thing with spiritual boss babe anyway, of like be the boss of your life and also create a life and a business that is built on the foundation of who you are. (laughs) So it doesn't really matter what shifts. There's usually a core theme though. Mm -hmm. I love that. that. I love it. It did. Yeah. Yeah. And as you gain more skills, and experiences and knowledge, you might want to infuse that into your work. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I became a trainer of NLP and hypnosis and all of that. That's infusing. When I started opening my channel, that stuff's, whenever I have like new mm-hmm. downloads, lessons, experiences, I, I teach it and I share it and in support for other people. So it's like, I don't know what's to come in, in my life in some regards, but maybe, you know, it, it can all has a place if, it, yeah. if I want to, to weave it into my work, my art. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Your art. Exactly. Like you have the ability to listen to what lights you up, what inspires you, what really gets you going and gets that passion ignited. And in using that to point your compass towards now you can go back and see that by doing that, you actually were following the path the whole time. Like you said, like the YouTube videos and the posting the workout videos. And like, I'm sure mm-hmm. back then you probably did not visualize this specific version of you, but now you can see that it was there all along. And if you want to get quantum, this yeah. version of me was guiding me back then and probably led me to plant medicine and all that. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> yes. And then the, the yes. next, the future exactly. version of me, your higher, your higher yes. self is always guiding yes. you. It, it, it might not always be crystal clear messages. However, you know, it's mm-hmm. listening to your intuition allows you to trust in the unknown and be supported. Yeah. Or the oh, unseen, I love that. I I have a quick question about that because I think that there's a lot of people about like who kind of feel stuck. They kind of feel like they're the people with the stories of like, Mm -hmm. or they don't believe in any of this stuff because the fact that they could manifest something kind of means that they've manifested the life that they're in right now that they kind of hate. And that's a little scary to face. So what would be your recommendation for somebody who's like, all right, like I'm willing to give it a try. Like I'm willing to try to like check in or be more intuitive or anything like that. Like what is a quick takeaway like step that people could do right now to just sort of get a little bit more in touch with the intuition or their spirit guides or, or anything in this world that could kind of give them that inner wisdom, that inner guidance as to where to go. Uh, I would say to start with meditating Um, and I know that sounds really simple, but here's the thing in order to hear the voice of your soul, of your higher self, you've got to quiet the mind. The mind is what gets everyone messed up. The stories, the loops of thoughts. We have like what? 60,000 something thoughts a day or a minute or some Mm -hmm. crazy. I don't, I don't remember the exact numbers or whatever, but it's wild. And our mind is constantly going and going and going. And so you've got to quiet the mind. And one of the best ways to do that is through meditation. And speaking along the lines of what you were saying of people who are in this space of like, oh, well, I don't know. I was in a, an abusive relationship for five years, mentally, physically, all the abuse. Like it was the lowest of low. And I'm not saying like other people, you know, I'm not like I'm in that experience, in that I had to muster up 
whatever strength speck was inside of me and it was a speck and decide to step into my power. Yeah. And, and it started through working out, eating better and meditating. And I started doing those three, three things. And I said, all right, I'm going to commit to these three things because I know that I knew I just had this inner knowing that's going to help me. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I wanted to leave that relationship, but I felt stuck because I didn't feel safe to leave it. It was like living hell. Mm -hmm. And so, but I knew the first place to start is going to be within. And I was like overweight, ate the crappiest things. like didn't know the first thing really about meditating. And I decided to commit to that. And so what I would say to anyone who's in a tough space is that there is a spark within you, no matter what, first of all, it's there and you just need to acknowledge it and listen to the slightest whisper of it. And the more you listen to the whisper of it, it will grow louder and louder and louder. And you will finally be able to truly hear the truth of who you are and easily navigate back into your power in the moments where you forget it because we're human. We have a, you know, an experience that's not always rainbows and butterflies mm -hmm. and you can learn how to navigate it more uh, effectively and make your desires stronger than your fears or stronger than your uh, self-imposed uh, limitations or excuses. Like when I was in that situation, I wanted nothing more than to leave that relationship. I knew that if I stayed, mm -hmm. I would probably not want to live on this planet very long. Like that's how bad it was. And I could have easily, and I, I mean, it was a dark time for me and I almost did not <laughs> stay here. So mm -hmm. I, but I made my desire stronger than my fears and I, stronger than anything, I was just like, connected to what would like, what will my life look like when I'm out of this situation, when I'm in my power, when I'm looking good, when I'm, you know, s mm -hmm. like smaller, feeling tone, good, whatever, like yeah. that. And I just was like, wow. Uh, and I made a promise to God universe. I said, if, when I get out of this, I promise I not only will I make the rest of my life, the best of my life, but I will help other people in some way. I will support other people in some way. And honestly, that got me through it. And so I'm sharing this because anyone listening, there's a spark within you and you can tune into it no matter how small or how dim it might look or feel right now, it's there. And you just need to bring your awareness to it and nurture it little by little. And if you feel like you can't do it on your own, get some support by someone who genuinely wants your happiness and, and wants to see you succeed and do it for yourself. You know, you don't need to do it all alone. I used to go to psychics at that time in my life. I was a teenager. I didn't really have like mm -hmm. access to, you know, yeah. so I, I literally would see this psychic, Mrs. Daniels, almost every week. She was my spiritual advisor and she actually is the one who taught me how to meditate. She's like, I think oh, you wow. should start doing these meditations. So like, I'm just saying like, there's people yeah. out there along your journey that are here to support you. That was, that's a total mic beautiful drop moment. Incredible. Yeah, that <laughs> no. was, I like, I don't know that we can make anything better after that. I think that <laughs> no, that was absolutely, it's super actionable. Like it is super yeah. actionable yeah. for people who are feeling a little bit and like, you've heard it before, go meditate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this mm -hmm. is why. Like this is a very specific reason as to why. And one of the things that I think was so beautiful was you said, if there's even the tiniest whisper of a voice, listen to that. Because that's the thing that people who feel stuck is they don't want to listen to the whisper. I didn't want to listen to the whisper. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, that's not, that's not for me. That's not real. You know, this is just how life is. This is how it's always going to be. Mm -hmm. And I didn't let myself listen to the mm -hmm. whisper until I started hearing from more people listen to the whisper and let it mm -hmm. come and be louder. So I so, so appreciate you sharing that and for being mm -hmm. so vulnerable and sharing your story with us. Cause I think a lot of yes. people that resonates with people of people are in abusive relationships, whether it's family, whether it's partners, whether it's work, um, whether it's whatever the case may be. Um, mm -hmm. so it's a hard thing to get out of. Um, you have literally answered every possible question I could have for you. I don't know, Charles, do you have any questions extra? No, I'm just, I'm so grateful. I feel like this has just been incredible yeah. and you have brought so much 
wisdom and lived experience to your journey and your story for our mm-hmm. listeners to really tap into and see themselves within that journey. And that's, I'm super excited about it. I just, I can't wait for our audience to sh- listen and hear your message and receive all of this love that, and, mm-hmm. and just joy that is just radiating off of you right now. Yes. So thank you so much, Stephanie. Where can people find you and learn how to do amazing things in their life just like you? Cool. Well, actually, I have um, a new site set up where everything's there and people could check out whatever they want. It's at stephb360.com. I actually have a free abundance hypnosis there as well. And so all, all the things are there, the podcast, Instagram, everything. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. We'll link that yeah. below to make sure. Yeah. And we're all going to be following you and seeing all these, these live events that you got going on. It's really awesome. Yeah. I'm so excited to share mm-hmm. all of the upgrades and updates for sure. That's awesome. Well, thank you so, so much. This has been absolutely incredible. Um, anybody who's listening to this, please, if this does not apply to you, you know, somebody in your life who this applies to. So please share this with them. Our goal, all three of us, our goal is to just help enlighten people, help them live better lives, help everybody just kind of elevate and just help everybody get healthier. So please, please share this information so that everyone can get healthier and happier and live the lives that they're intended to live. Um, if anybody is in the local Columbus area and is interested in hanging with Chelsea and I on April 8th, we are doing an in-person seminar on helping people sort of merge that mind body connection get back into their body start understanding a little bit about that physical connection that's happening with those mental and emotional symptoms helping manage some of the anxiety some of the chronic pain all that kind of stuff i believe we have one spot left two i think we have two spots spots left left. two spots left Mm -hmm. so please, please, please uh, feel free to reach out and we will get you set up with that. Um, Again, thank you, Stephanie, so much. This was absolutely incredible. We appreciate your time today, your wisdom. This has been amazing. Um, Thank you, everybody, for listening, and I hope everyone has a fantastic week. That's all I have for you today. If you've enjoyed this episode, absolutely let us know by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts or tagging us on Instagram, or you can find us at Healing Art Podcast. Your feedback means the world to us, and taking those few moments to let us know what you loved, what you felt while listening, and what you would like to hear next would be so, so very appreciated. Check out the show notes below for links and resources mentioned in this conversation, and information for how you can come along on this journey towards abundance and healing, and become a part of something so much bigger than ourselves, as well as how you can soak up more of Stephanie's incredible presence. Until next time, this has been the healing art of being you, sending you love and light.